Trojans, please stand now so that we may salute you. These extraordinary men and women demonstrate that to be a Trojan is to be a Trojan for life. Our half-century Trojans were educated and mentored by previous generations, and they have shown their support for younger Trojans like the students graduating today. I am confident that our newest alumni become leaders in their careers and their communities. They, too, will support the generations of the future. To the students we celebrate today, congratulations. From this moment on and for the rest of your lives, may you use your great gifts and talents to bring positive change to our lives and our world. We will always, always be proud of you. And may you always be proud to say that you are part of the Trojan family. Congratulations, class of 2019. Now, I would like to acknowledge some of the people who were instrumental in helping our graduates reach this moment today. At this time, I'd like to thank the USC faculty and staff for their contributions, support, and expertise. They set a standard of excellence for our students to follow. Will our outstanding faculty and staff please stand and be recognized. Next, it is time to recognize the friends and family members of our graduates. Your sacrifices and encouragement sustain our students in mind, body, and spirit. Will the parents and grandparents of our graduates, husbands, wives, partners, family members, and friends, please stand so that we may salute you. Your presence here is a powerful reminder that we can always count on our Trojan family and that family continues to grow. This is a special commencement for me for many reasons, but it's a special commencement for Gloria Kaufman as well. She brought her own fan club. <laughs> this year, we celebrate our first class of graduates from the USC Kaufman School of Dance. Today, these young scholar artists join an inspiring legacy that speaks to our university's long-standing excellence in the arts. As they receive their degrees, we also recognize that same creativity and dedication in all of our graduates. This is indeed a special day for them and for the entire USC community. Next, I would like to salute USC's exceptional senior scholars, beginning with our university-wide honors program. All of these programs require an overall grade point average of 3.5 or better, and they each focus on one of USC's distinct strengths. Discovery scholars build upon our university's emphasis on innovation through original research and artistic creation. Our global scholars focus on international learning by studying or working as an intern or a volunteer for at least 10 weeks outside of the U.S. Our Renaissance scholars take advantage of USC's rich array of academic subjects by mastering at least two widely varied majors and minors. 
In addition, our Dorn Sife scholars pursue solutions to pressing social challenges facing our global community by striving to make a positive impact on the world. And finally, our Mark Family Scholars have demonstrated the highest qualities of scholarship and citizenship while at USC and will continue to do so as they pursue their careers in life. Would all of our honors scholars please stand so that we may recognize you. I would now like to recognize 14 undergraduate students who have received a perfect 4.0 grade point average. Please hold your applause as I read all of their names and we will recognize them as a group. These students are Lauren Patrimici, Lucas Gelfin, Alexandra Gershman, Lamisa Hassan, Siwei He, Raphael Merrick, Campbell Maddox, Jackson Reinhardt, Victoria Shumakova, Sarah Stevens, Joseph Teplecki, Hao Chen Wong, Taylor Whitmer, Madeline Zen. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a round of applause for the extraordinary. At this time, I'd like to recognize three exemplary students from the class of 2019 who epitomized the greatest aspirations of all Trojan graduates as salutatorian and valid Victorian. This year, we had two salutatorians, Divya Gupta and Hao Chen Wang. Our first salutatorian, Divya Gupta, is receiving her degree in biological sciences from our Dornsife College of Letters, Arts, and Sciences. Her commitment to helping others drives her scholarship and service at USC. She's been an important advocate for student health and safety as a member of our undergraduate student government. She will attend medical school in the fall as she plans to continue helping others achieve wellness by pursuing a career in health research and policy. Please join me in saluting Divya Gupta, a salutatory in the class of Our second salutatorian, Hao Chen Wang is graduating from our Dornside College with degrees in astronomy and mathematics. His remarkable commitment to research includes his work with teams at USC and the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, as well as his contributions to NASA's Juno mission. His dedication to scientific inquiry is matched by his commitment to his artistic pursuits. He is a talented pianist and singer and has performed internationally with the USC Thornton Chandler Singers. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in recognizing Hao Chen Wang, a salutatory of the Now, it's my special privilege to introduce the valedictorian for the class of 2019, Ms. Ivana Jang. An extraordinarily talented young woman, Ivana is a public policy major at our Price School as well as a business major at our Joint Science College. She's a passionate advocate for justice and equality in our Los Angeles community and around the world. Her dedication to scholarship and volunteer service has taken her to Nicaragua, Uganda, and Washington, D.C., where she served as the Schaefer Fellow in the United States Senate. Next year, she will add yet another stamp to her passport when she travels to Vietnam as the recipient of her prestigious Princeton in Asia Fellowship. I am honored to present to you our valedictorian, 
an enterprising scholar whose achievements have earned her singular distinction among her peers. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ms. Jane. trying to hold back tears, but this isn't new for me. I cry at everything. <laughs> I cried before and after almost every dance competition performance I've had over the last four years. I've also cried seeing community development in action in Uganda, and I've cried witnessing the growth of students I've mentored. These emotional moments at USC have been unforgettably beautiful, but others have just been beautifully simple. Eating 15 cent ice cream in the park with my host sister in Nicaragua, diving deep into talks about family and identity with my best friends at four in the morning, and even just laughing at memes with my roommates over empty boxes of chicken nuggets, of course, at four in the morning. <laughs> Mom and dad, you weren't supposed to know that, but I'm graduating right now, so it's okay, right? <laughs> These memories are the beautiful things I've experienced in this world, no matter how insignificant they might seem. We shouldn't take for granted everything that's allowed us to do all of these extraordinary and ordinary things. And shouldn't everyone have the right to learn and grow and express themselves with the goal of experiencing these beautiful moments in life? To me, that is a right that everyone deserves. But let's be honest, it's a right that not everyone has right now. We have to acknowledge that women, the queer and trans community, first generation and low income students, indigenous communities, differently abled individuals, migrants and refugees, and the black, brown, Latinx, and Asian Pacific communities haven't all had the same chance to experience what is beautiful in this world. This is true around the globe and right here on this campus. We have to be honest about the institutions we are a part of because we care about improving them. It's because I love USC that I helped create the Chief Diversity Officer position in the undergraduate student government after seeing that the university's efforts to increase diversity and inclusion weren't quite meeting the mark. I've seen great progress at USC since my freshman year, and now it certainly is groundbreaking that for the first time in the 139 years since its founding, women are leading the university. But breaking ground isn't enough. It's not enough to find new people to cycle through the same old systems. We have to reimagine a fundamental cultural shift of these systems. Here at USC, we've been told to fight on all these years. But I have to ask USC, what are we fighting for? I've fought alongside many friends to make underrepresented student voices heard because I believe in USC. And since USC believes in me to stand up here today, I hope my voice is heard loud and clear. <laughs> there is a moral responsibility to protect the right for everyone to experience what is beautiful in this world. And given all that's happened here this year, I think it's time our campus <laughs> leaders take a lesson from us students about how to truly live by a set of values. We have, and I know we will continue to show, that we take seriously the obligation to protect everyone's access around the globe to what is beautiful in life. But more than just having learned about the world through our classes, we have to continue to empathize with it 
and appreciate it, not only for what it is now, but also for what it could be in the future. Engineers and those in business can collaborate on the next green tech to protect future generations. Artists, designers, musicians, and performers will create things that inspire. And those working in education and healthcare can prepare people to go and find what's beautiful about the world themselves. It doesn't matter what our majors were or what our jobs might be. We will be the ones to decide what that future looks like in which everyone in all parts of the globe can experience the beauty of being alive. As for me, to protect what is beautiful has been my why over the last several years. Why I fight for access to education, why I advocate for more conscious global relations, and why I've tried so hard to fill the world with love. I'd be lying if I said I figured out a job title for all of that. But for now, I hope that my unashamed willingness to cry in the face of these frustrating challenges and beautiful opportunities says this, that it's okay to feel and to struggle with everything that concerns us as humans. But for all that I've done at USC to place value on emotional vulnerability, the truth is that I'm still struggling with it where I think it matters most, with family. And I know I'm not alone. I hope you all take the time to give love to those who have made today possible. But if you'll bear with me for now, I want to say to my na, that my brother, my Bawai and Benoi here, and my Hawaiian and Onoi watching from above, and all of my ba Ongi Ko Kaoju who flew here, and those who are back home in Ohio, I'm working every day to understand how much it took for you to build your lives after the American War in Vietnam. And then be re and then and then be forced to rebuild your lives here in America as refugees. Because of you, I've experienced so many beautiful things throughout my life. Thank you for everything. for what's beautiful in this world. To my fellow graduates. Can we all make a promise to spread a little more love wherever we go from here? Can we share some of the beauty we felt here today together? I know we have it in us. So I'm confident that we really mean it when we say together, fight on. Thank you. giving us those words of encouragement this morning. At this time, we'll present honorary degrees to seven exceptional individuals. As a group, they represent excellence in a broad variety of endeavors, and they share a passionate commitment to bettering the lives of others through their work. Their collective contributions stand as an inspiration to us all. First, I'd like to acknowledge the two honorary degree candidates who were unable to join us today, Edith Grove and Eli Grove. Earlier this week, I presented each of them with their diplomas in a special ceremony. Edith Grove's lifelong passion for the arts has transformed the cultural landscape of our city, and Eli Grove's entrepreneurial vision has fueled a wide, ranging research enterprise. Together, the Broads are the consummate philanthropists of our era and for our world. Their boundless generosity is seen not only in the beautiful museum in the heart of our city, but also the cutting edge medical research center on our health sciences campus. In recognition of their extraordinary humanitarian work and their tremendous efforts to improve our quality of life, 
The University of Southern California is proud to honor Edith Broad and Eli Broad with the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa. Now I'm pleased to personally introduce our next candidate. Upon the recommendation of the appropriate university committee, I present for the honorary degree of Doctor of Music, Dr. Arthur C. Bartman. brought the band with him. <laughs> Dr. Bartner has been the heart and soul of our Trojan marching band for almost half a century. He embodies the Trojan spirit, inspiring our community with his showmanship, his dedication, and his tireless efforts to educate and uplift our students. His bold vision transformed our band into the renowned Spirit of Troy, while making its energetic performances an essential part of USC's storied athletic tradition. Generations of USC students have thrived under his guidance as he has illustrated the importance of commitment, preparation, and teamwork in their daily lives. The USC community is especially proud to honor Dr. Bartner's musical creativity, his outstanding mentorship, and his enduring legacy as he prepares to celebrate his 50th anniversary as the director of our Trojan Marching Band. By the authority vested in me by the USC Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon Arthur C. Bartner the degree of Doctor of Music, Honoris Causa. Please accept our warmest congratulations. Our Dean of the USC Thornton School of Music and the USC Kaufman School of Dance, Robert Cudietta, will present our next candidate for an honorary degree. Madam President, on the recommendation of the appropriate university committee, I present for the honorary doctorate degree the Doctor of Fine Arts, Mr. Mikhail Baryshnikov. One of the greatest dancers of our time, and indeed of all time, Mr. Baryshnikov has introduced audiences around the world to the beauty and the drama of the performing arts. He began his inspiring career with the world's most esteemed ballet companies and has earned widespread acclaim as an actor in theater, television, and film. He's a champion of artists across the globe, helping nurture their talent and creativity. He symbolizes artistic integrity and courage, and he stands as a beacon for all those who follow in his footsteps. For his incomparable artistry, his prodigious talent, and his contributions to the evolving landscape of dance, the University of Southern California is proud to honor Mikhail Baryshnikov with the degree of Doctor of Fine Arts, Honoris Causa.
Our Dean of the USC Dornside College of Letters, Arts, and Sciences, Amber Miller, will present our next candidate for an honorary degree. Madam President, upon the recommendation of the appropriate university committee, I present for the honorary degree of Doctor of Science, Dr. Emery Neal Brown. A remarkably creative scholar, Dr. Brown has significantly deepened our understanding of the brain. His brilliant work has helped decipher the mechanics of general anesthesia, which has long stood as one of modern medicine's greatest mysteries. In the field of neuroscience, his pioneering statistical research has brought greater clarity to the inner workings of the nervous system. A true physician scientist, he is committed to improving patient health outcomes and his efforts to elevate standards of care to continue to inspire his colleagues throughout the medical community. For his peerless scholarship, his groundbreaking discoveries, and his foundational influence on the science and practice of anesthesiology, the University of Southern California is proud to honor Emory Neal Brown with the degree of Doctor of Science, honoris causa. Authority vested in me by the USC Board of Trustees, I hereby confer on Emory Neal Brown the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. Please accept our warmest congratulations. Our Dean of the Ross Sear School of Education, Karen Sims Gallagher, will present our next candidate for an honorary degree. Madam President, upon the recommendation of the appropriate university committee, I present for the honorary degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Mrs. Cindy Hensley-McCain. Thank you. 